blessing right now. We pray that you bless us and bless this gathering. We want to leave here with your name in our hearts and on our lips. We want to leave here with a greater determination to lift up your holy and righteous name, to be a walking demonstration of your word willing way. Here's our prayer. We ask and pray. In that same name, Jesus, let the saints of God say amen. text for the day comes from Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2, those first seven verses, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. I'm not going to read all of it because I'm trying to abbreviate. I start at verse 4. And Joseph went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth to Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his spouse wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in the manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. I want to talk about a glowing God. A glowing God. Let the people in. Let them in. Let them in. Let them in. Let them in. A glowing. His light conquered the darkness. His light 
is yeah. superior to the darkness. Right. Right. I can't be a child of light and be about darkness. Right. I wish I had a witness with that. Yeah. Preacher was struggling today. He was preaching this morning on TV saying that God is a God in the darkness. And you ought not be thinking about him just being a God of light because God can get you out of your dark places. Well, if you're a child of God, darkness ought not be able to hang around you too yeah. much. I've got so much God in me, darkness runs from me. When the dark see me coming, dark try to go the other way. But you know, in darkness, so we can't win as long as God is shining in my life. Well, it says Caesar Augustus, Caesar Augustus, he was the one who starts all this. Caesar Augustus, he made a decree that. And they said Caesar Augustus was such a great ruler that when he uh, died and they had his funeral, they thought so much of him, they called him a god, a small G-O-D god. He, he had built new highways. He had a, a magnificent army. That, that Roman Empire he built was magnificent and known all over the world. They thought he was a god. And, and he decreed that there was taxes and everybody had to go to their hometown. The only reason Joseph is in Bethlehem because this man decreed that there would be some taxation and he had to come back home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Missed it, missed it. Well, some people say, well, who really determined history then? Does Caesar determine history? Does kings determine history? Does the president determine history? You think your governor determines where your life goes? You think the Supreme Court has the power to change your life? Baby, let me tell you something. Before there was a governor, a king, a ruler, that was God. And God is still in control. You see, that's what's beautiful about God. We think that we're manipulating God, and God is manipulating us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Caesar thought he was running something, but you got to understand God is who runs Caesar. God, God is the one who shakes Caesar and wake him up in the morning. God is the one who gives him another chance. And so you got to recognize it's God who's in control, and God is always faithful to his word. I wish I had somebody who could get excited about the fact that God is all that in a bag of chips. Michael, the great prophet, he, he predicted that the Savior would be born in Bethlehem. Yeah, yeah. That word Bethlehem means house of bread. Yeah. Come on here, somebody. Yeah. Jesus had nerve enough to say he is the bread of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all missed it, y'all missed it. That was yeah, yeah, right there. That's what I'm Because he got Jesus, who is the bread of life, to be born in the house of bread. Yeah. In other words, you got to have some bread in order to make, I wish I had a witness here. you got to have some bread in order to make life live, worth living. The lady was at the, do you want some water? You don't need no water. I'm the living water. I, I, I'm, I'm living water. I'm the bread of life. That, how many of you have been trying to live without some bread? You better, you better make sure you got Jesus. No, we used to call money bread back in the day. You got any bread? You know what I found out? You can have a pocket full of money and still don't have no bread. Uh, and then they talk to me, you can go in the store and they don't have stuff for you to buy. That, I need to have more than money. I got to have somebody who's in charge. Isn't it amazing? You can go to a store and they can't sell your bread and God will fix it so somebody will knock on your door and give you some bread. Glory 
glorious duty. Yeah. All right. Glorious duty that, that this God who delivers his promise to this, this baby Mary, right. yeah. this young woman. He says, you are blessed above women. Yeah. And you are going to bring forth the Son of God. Yeah. Yeah. He told Joseph, that which is in her is of God. Yeah. I wish I had a witness here. Yeah. I just told you, God created us to glorify Him. God. How do you glorify God? You glorify God when you do that which God has created you to do. It's right there in the text. The Bible said the, Bible said the baby was fully delivered. And when the baby came, Say she took the baby and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. Yeah. Oh, y'all don't get it. Y'all don't get it. So. Swaddling clothes. That's when you take paper, take little strips of cloth. Yeah. Yeah. And have a whole lot of fancy stuff and just wrap the little strips around the baby and kept wrapping the little strips till it almost looked like a little cocoon. You've seen the pictures. The pictures are pretty accurate. The little baby is wrapped up in a little little cloth, looking like a little cocoon. She wraps him. In swaddling clothes, yeah. and then she laid him in a manger. Yeah. Y'all missed it. Y'all didn't think about anything to that. Yeah. What she was doing, all she was doing, is performing her duty as a mother right. to take care of her child. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Yeah. Y'all missed it. See, see, sometimes we are so busy trying to do the miraculous. We are so difficult with trying to do the unusual. We want to do that which stands out. But you know what God says? You don't have to do all that. You just need to do what I told you to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need to do what I made you do. And sometimes you're so busy trying to do what you can't do, you overlook what you can do. And if you just be who God made you to be, that's all God wants you to be. God don't want you to be Caucasian if you're African American. He's not trying to make you Asian. If you're an Indian, he doesn't want you to be something you're not. Just be who you are. You don't have to be a PhD if you never finish school. You don't have to try to look like you wrote a book and you have enough. Just be who you are. Like, like you don't have to act like you are on a mansion and you wouldn't have two nipples to run together. You're in debt trying to buy a car you can't afford, no way. And you talk about, oh, these, these. These notes are killing me, mercy me. These notes are killing me. You, you need to understand, all I can do is do what I can do. And when I do all I can do, that pleases the Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah. Somebody know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being a child of God means you just do mother stuff. Don't, don't try to be the mama and the daddy. You just be a mama. God has sent a dad. I wish I had somebody. She's the mama and mama. I didn't have a whole lot of mama and dad and mother and all where I live, but they always had somebody that God would send in to fill in the gap. That, come on here, somebody. God will send an uncle or he'll send a brother down the street. He always will send somebody to fill that gap because God is that kind of God. Oh, my God, it's a gift today. And I'm so glad that God is saying, all you have to do is do your duty. That, that, that you know, some of you need to say, well, I don't have any children. That don't mean anything. My great aunt, when I call, we call her name, Virgin Home. I told you, didn't have a nan child. I can tell you the whole story, but I couldn't tell you in church. She never had a child, but she was a mother to a whole lot of people. I remember her making up some pancakes. And she didn't have no box to put in that. My, my, my name would take some flour and some bacon. Oh, y'all don't know nothing about that. And she would mix that thing together. But she didn't just mix it together, y'all. She'd stand there and she'd beat that thing. She'd work on that. I didn't think the beat was a whole lot, but I found out beating that mix is what made it pancake, y'all. See, so we was in school, we used to make glue with flour and water. The difference between glue and pancake is how much you beat it. She knew how to take care of children. She knew how to bless yeah. children. She know how to be a blessing to somebody else's child. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you. Instead of you complaining about what you can't do, God said you need to do what you can do. If you can't say, you can usher. If you can't usher, you can say amen. If you can't say amen. You can help somebody. Put a smile at somebody at church and say, glad to be in the service one more time. You, you can be positive no matter who you are. 
we all can be somebody if we allow God to have a way in our life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, I have a witness here. Yeah, right. When I learned how to be who I am, that's what they did when they said, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. I, I, was, I told you, I was raised in the church and have now doctor didn't have man Lord but Clint ain't had nobody no school teachers within the church I was raised in over at Bethel Church on Brenham Street but I tell you what we had some folk who loved the Lord yeah. didn't have no opera singer but they sung like they knew what they were singing about we didn't sing amen or uh, uh, amazing grace by, by the notes we, we didn't say you know amen amen grace oh, no 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 they, they sung it the way they felt it they yeah. sung it like they knew who the grace was all about. They sung that they knew how amazing the grace was. Like they knew how to pat their feet and clap their hands. They knew how to make vibrations in church with little children. You feel stuff going up and down their spine because they knew they didn't have a whole lot, but the little light they had, they were going to let that shine. They might have to split a verb or two, but they're going to split them for the Lord. They're going to let God get the glory for their life. They were ready show up and show out for the master as long as they was lifting him up. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. They knew everything was alright. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I still got five minutes. I'm not sure. <laughs> Growing delight. Yes. She, she did the best she could yes. what she had. Yes. Uh, and because she did what she did she was in touch with God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And because she was in touch with God, she was in touch with the light of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I said because she was in touch with God, she had something that changed her life. Yeah. You see, when you mess around with the light, yeah, Lord. he'll fool around and give you delight. <laughs> changes my life. Yeah. He, he illuminates my life. Uh -huh. he, he makes my light brighter because he shines through me. Uh -huh. I said it's a growing delight. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had time to preach that thing, but let me just do it. Let me call on the word. But, but can you get somebody to help you? The psalmist says, yes, blessed is the man who walk it not in the counsel of the ungodly, yeah. nor standing in the way of sinners, yeah. nor sitting in the seat of the scornful, yeah. but his delight. Yeah. Y'all need to understand the light. Underline his delight is in the law of the law. In other words, he delights in pleasing God. And when you delight in pleasing God, God delights in blessing you. When you delight in lifting God up, God delights in blessing your life. When you delight in the laws of the Lord, the rules of the Lord, the ways of the Lord, the Lord will make a difference in your life. Yeah, 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 yeah. I came here, yes, to say Merry Christmas. Ain't talking about no prop, no, no gifts under a tree. I'm talking about a gift from a holy father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I want to lift him up. I want to please him. I want to give him glory because if I lift him up, he can lift us up. If we give him his rightful place, he'll give us our rightful place. And we learn how to do what he told us. Uh, we'll learn how to receive the spirit I told you last week. And then we'll have the fruit of the spirit. And the first fruit of the spirit that's really all of the fruit is the spirit of love. And we'll learn how to love one another. We'll have racism and hatred and strife. But we'll walk around not living the living word that will be the word made alive. You don't have to preach a sermon, but folk can see a sermon. They can't say nobody loves them because they know you love them. I have a witness here. Ain't the Lord all right? And he heard me to be great. I said he's a glowing God because we are made to glorify God. And we glorify God when we live the way he 
He made us to live. He's a glowing God because His light shines through us. And His light shining through us calls us to let our light shine. And our light can't shine without making Him glow. It's pleasing to God when we do His will. It's pleasing to God when we let Him have His way. Is there anybody here feel like pleasing the Lord? Is there anybody here feel like letting Him have His way? Is there anybody here who loves the Lord? He says, how can you love me who you've never seen? And you hate your sister and your brother who you're looking at every day. If you see the love of God, He'll give you the love of God. And if you walk around loving God, is better if you walk around and love it. Life is sweeter if you walk around and love it. Life is greater. Is there anybody here who know my Jesus? Is there anybody here who know my Lord? If you love it, say yeah. Say yeah. Every 